Hi class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Matt Fisher, I'm your accounting instructor. In today's lecture, we're gonna be going on over different cost classifications. So let's get started. First of all, let's look at fixed versus variable costs. When we're talking about a fixed cost, we're talking about a cost that isn't gonna change when volume changes. For example, let's say that we sell soccer balls for our business. And let's say we could sell 100 soccer balls or maybe 1,000 soccer balls this month. And let's assume that uh, currently we rent our place of business for $1,000 a month. All right. So if we sell 100 soccer balls, the rent's $1,000. If we sell 1,000 soccer balls, the rent's still $1,000. So rent is an example of a fixed cost. Now let's take a look at variable costs. Variable costs will change in volume, as volume changes, I should say. So let's go back to our, our soccer ball example. Let's say that we use a synthetic leather to manufacture these soccer balls. And let's say that material, that synthetic leather, costs $10 per soccer ball. This is a variable cost, because if we manufacture 10 soccer balls, we're gonna incur a cost of $100. If we manufacture 25 soccer balls, then we're gonna incur a different cost. 25 times $10 per soccer ball is $250 worth of leather, all right? So I hope you can see the difference there between fixed and variable costs. Now let's take a look at direct versus indirect costs. But first, let's define what a cost object is. That's kind of important right now. A cost object is how we measure and separate costs. And we can do this by process, by product, by department. We can do it any way we want to, okay? In this lecture and in most of these lectures, we're gonna assume the cost object will be the product. So we'll be looking at cost, determining whether they're direct or indirect when we're talking about the product that we're manufacturing. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the direct cost for a soccer ball. The direct cost can be traced directly to that cost object or to the soccer ball. So direct materials and direct labor are the direct costs. The direct materials would be such things as uh, the synthetic leather, okay? And that's probably the main direct cost associated with this. They might be using some sort of thread to tie this together, to, to put the, the soccer ball together. More than likely, that thread is very immaterial in cost and probably they're not gonna be measuring exactly how much. They could, but more than likely they won't. And so that thread would not be a direct material, it would be indirect. And we'll talk about that in just a minute because it would cost too much money for us to measure the true cost of the thread that goes into each soccer ball. Direct labor is also a direct cost, all right? These are the people that are hands-on stitching together these soccer balls. They would be direct labor. If we're talking about indirect labor, that'd be like the janitors at the plant or also the supervisors. They're working at the plant, but they're not directly contributing to the manufacture of the soccer ball. They're not hands-on, all right? So direct costs can be directly traced and easily traced to the item we're manufacturing. Indirect costs are not easily traced into the product. These indirect costs are all the costs taking place at the plant that aren't direct materials or direct labor, such as the utilities taking place at the plant, the depreciation on the equipment, and like I said before, the thread and also the supervisor salaries. Okay, now let's take a look at product versus period cost. A product cost are those costs incurred to manufacture the product, such as the direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. Overhead are the indirect costs, which we already discussed. These costs are incurred in the manufacturing or the production plant, all right? So product costs take place at the manufacturing plant, okay? These costs will originally be in inventory, which we'll talk about a little bit more about later in this video. And then once they're sold, then they'll move out of inventory into cost of goods sold. Now, period costs are the costs incurred in the non-production areas, such, such as sales, distribution, the research areas. These costs are expensed in the period that they're incurred, 
right? So there's a difference. Product costs, they're not expensed immediately. We'll have direct materials, direct labor, we'll have salary costs taking place at the plant. Those costs will go into inventory accounts and then eventually expensed in cost of goods sold. Whereas period costs are expensed in the period they're incurred. All right, so there's the difference between product and period costs. Now let's, let's take a look at manufacturing costs. We've kind of talked about these already, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. The direct materials go directly into the product, traceable. Direct labor are the cost of the laborers. And overhead, now I haven't mentioned overhead before. I mentioned indirect costs, but the overhead are the indirect costs. And sometimes we call them factory overhead or manufacturing overhead, but it's the same. They're all overhead costs. And these costs take place in the plant and they include such things as the salaries of uh, supervisors, the salaries of janitors, anyone that's not dr directly working on the product to manufacture it, but that they work in the plant. Depreciation on the plant itself, depreciation on the equipment, all of those would be overhead costs, the utilities and the property taxes, things such as that, all right? The next classification I want to take a look at are the manufacturing inventory costs, right? These are the product costs that we've already mentioned. We're going to divide these into three different categories. Now, this is only for manufacturing. So we're looking at the manufacturing sector right now. So they're going to have raw materials, which are made up of the materials that they need in order to manufacture this product. It's also made up of a work in process inventory account. Right? These are the costs being accumulated as they build or manufacture the product. So the product is being manufactured. It's not done yet, so it's in process. A lot of times we call this the WIP inventory. So we're just tracking the costs as they come in. So as we incur materials into our product, we'll add them to work in process. As labor is incurred, it will go into work in process. As inventory is taking place, I'm sorry, as overhead is taking place, it will be allocated. In a later video, we'll see how that overhead is allocated into work in process. Lastly, we'll have our finished goods inventory. Once the item's finished, it doesn't stay in work in process because it's no longer in process, it's done. So then we take those costs that we've accumulated in work in process, and they will transfer over with that item into finished goods inventory, all right? This transferring over that cost is called the cost of goods manufactured, all right? Now, once the item's sold, it's transferred out of finished goods into cost of goods sold. And now, cost of goods sold is an expense. Raw materials, work in process, and finished goods are all inventory accounts. They're assets. I want to point out one item here. Hopefully from your previous accounting class, you remember that double journal entry when we sell something, right? When we sell a product uh, that's in inventory. So let's assume that we're selling the soccer ball for $50 and the cost of it, of that soccer ball is $30 in finished goods inventory. So now when we sell it, we're going to get $50 cash or maybe accounts receivable and then we'll credit revenue for $50. And if you recall that we have this double journal entry. So now we have to take out the cost of the item. The, uh, the cost was $30. So what we're going to do is debit cost of goods sold $30 and credit finished goods inventory $30. Cost of goods sold will increase with that debit. Finished goods inventory will decrease with the credit which makes perfect sense because we just sold it. So it needs to come out of finished goods inventory. Just a couple more things before we finish with this video. Uh, sometimes managers, people at businesses like to talk about the prime costs. The prime costs are direct materials and direct labor. Prime, meaning they're the direct costs. When they say or mention conversion costs, they're talking about the costs needed in order to convert materials to a product. So if we have materials, nothing's going to happen to those materials until we convert them. And the only way to convert them is to put in direct labor and overhead. So the conversion costs then are 
direct labor and overhead. I hope this video has made sense to you. I look forward to see you in the next videos and I hope you enjoy this class, Managerial Accounting. We'll see you soon.